Joining you from glorious Alhambra, a little overcast today. I don't mind it. Still glorious. I like it too. But the, doesn't stop the planes. Another big jet. Looks like uh, Air Tahiti Nui or whatever. It's not Air Tahiti Nui. You should start getting the call tags or I something, know. so you really know what's I going on. I want to do here. it. It's happening right now. It's the Inside LFC Max and Vince podcast. Hey, welcome back. Good to be back. Welcome back to me too. Welcome back we to you. We you and I together. have not done a podcast together in over two weeks. I feel like that tag team partner that broke up because I wanted a shot at the Intercontinental title, and then I just discovered I'm better as a tag team artist, so I, I rejoined. So let's get those titles back. Yeah. Let's go get those titles back. I'll, I'll, tell, you, I'll tell you what was scary. You, you did it the first week with Jordan, and then I did it with Jordan, and I was like, he's good. going to put us out of work. Yeah, we're not going to do this for much longer. It's just going to be Jordan you know, solo. An, and by Jordan is the plus one next this Saturday. Hey, Philadelphia. there you go. His first full I, broadcast, I knew he right? was in it, but I didn't know because we're going to have like different guys, but he's going to have his full broadcast. <laughs> wow. We'll see how good he is. And now, Top if he of nails- the table clash, for, first full broadcast. He did play for the Union, so maybe he has some old stories from back in the day. If he nails that, then we're in real big trouble. Yeah. Because uh, in between uh, all of this, he's with the kids, helping the development of the academies. He's with he's the here. foundation. He's with the the first Get team. Get lost, Jordan. What are you trying to do? You make it's you're making this all look well, bad. We, we joked about it on because uh, I said, oh, you, you know, you're you're like an assistant coach. He goes, yeah, I don't even know what my exact title is when it comes to coaches. I go, well, actually, we had something with you in it, and they asked me, go, what do we font Jordan as, assistant coach, or what's his title? I go. I don't know. Just put LAFC because he's like he's Mr. LAFC. So I think that's what I, that's what I'm going with now. An incredible asset imagine, to have. Imagine that business card, Jordan Harvey, Mr. LAFC. Mr. LAFC. Man, I should have. I was in. Should have copyright that I'll thing. I'll tell you what. I'll share. I'll share this story because he'll never. He'll never. He doesn't listen to this podcast. I was in the uh, lobby way, of the PC of here, the PC. But this is where we are. Jeez, jeez, we're we're getting we're just getting back in the group. In the lo- now the sun's okay. coming out. Thanks Again, a lot. In the lobby way, I'm talking to Jordan Harvey. I hear a voice behind me go, that's the greatest signing in LAFC history. And I go, what? I look, Carlos Vela. And he goes, that, that guy. And he just gave, gave Jordan the little, and then left. I felt pretty good there, uh, yeah. Vince. He, he rubbed my shoulder. Yeah. Uh, it, is, it is true in the sense that this is what you want as a club. I know I've mentioned this before, to cultivate players that, an expansion club. Mm-hmm. That we I, don't know, I think all clubs. I mean, some players. All clubs want guys clubs that they can well. build and identify with that club. Mm-hmm. That every time you see them, you associate them with this team. In this case, LAFC, mm-hmm. and you think about it, and you have your memories as a supporter, where you go, "Yeah, rem- uh, he's been a part of it. He is going to be miserable when the team loses, just like me. He's going to be elated. I can drink champagne with him when they win a title. All of that is in play, and that is a very good feeling. But you can't fabricate it." Yeah, and I think for expansion club, it's that much more important because you got to get the first one right, right? Like there might be a guy that'll stick around, and be like yeah, I'll do all the stuff, and then he's never around. Jordan's everywhere, so he's he's bought in, he's all in on all sides of the business too. He tells me that him and Larry Friedman, he's like, you want to learn some of the the guts, some of the how the sausage is made. I mean, he's in all parts of this. I should get place. into that with Larry Friedman. Maybe I'll tag along. Yeah, your numbers guy. I just want to know more. Information is king. Uh, by the way, we have lots of information here. We have heard you, LAFC supporters. So our special guest here, Danny Masofsky, who is Moose. an incredible story. Moose. We heard the chance of Moose. And a guy who was, you know, you wondered what his, his role would be here. He has just redefined it, and mm-hmm. he has become a key player for the best team in Major League, League Soccer right now. Well, it goes back to something that you and I have been talking about, a little bit about Steve's manner and the way he's gone about with this team. I don't love to comment on body language of teams, but man, this team really likes each other. Yeah. Like you just see it. Kind of annoying. Home and away. When they score goals, they celebrate with Steve. They all celebrate together. It's it really is a group effort, and I think that the one. Th- I mean, obviously they play an aesthetically pleasing style. Yes, we have great players that are highly skilled, but at the end of the day, that ability to bring this team together and get them all on the same page has been the MVP of this season. It is when you look at uh, these LAFC games. What's exciting is that you're not—you don't know who's going to be on the field for these incredible moments at the end. And this time it was Danny Masofsky and Jose Cifuente and Hol- Ryan Hollingshead, guys that didn't start this game. Next week it could be someone complete. Maybe Pancho Ginella was in on that with that incredible heel kick. Uh, and tacon, we- tacon de Pancho. Huh? Tacon, tacon. I don't, think, that, I don't, I don't think that's in, like, the Spanish language, but in little, Italian. You'll kick a little taquito, which is, like, you know, as well. Right. Well, Italian is it's taco de zola. De zola. That's, a, that's a mouthful. Well, because Zola, hey. you've, you've seen that goal. Gianfranco yes. Zola, the back, the back heel off the corner. It's Greatest fan song in the history of fan songs, Gianfranco Zola by the Chelsea fans. Yeah. It goes, John, Frank, 
Co. Zo. La, 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 la. So I love, it's just etched in my mind. Really builds. At first I was like, it's not going well. <laughs> <laughs> I know, you have to wait for it. We will preview the Minnesota game. We no, will, I mean, really. we'll preview the Philadelphia game. We'll talk about Minnesota, and we'll have Danny coming up here momentarily. Uh, we want to wish everyone a happy Mother's Day. Of all the fabricated holidays, and that's what I call them, Valentine's Day, it's worth it. Father's Day, that's the only one that matters. But we can get rid of Father's Day. I don't need it. Don't need it. I just need to be left alone for a few hours on that day. I think <laughs> yeah. that's fair. And <laughs> that's terrible. Valentine's Mother's Day is the one that matters. So have a happy Mother's Day. Make sure you spend it with your, your wife, your, your mother. Who, spend it with your family. It's very special because we know that they, that that person in their family is so important. And uh, it's also important for Steve Trundolo because we'll, we'll hear him up close as well. In touch with in Steve Trundolo this week. Obviously, we're talking about Mother's Day. And Steve talk has some, about that. some good stories, some good talk about his mom and his and, wife, Mandy. The jobs that they do. So we'll get into that. Minnesota. Unique circumstance because Minnesota a little bit shorthanded. They came in with a certain style that they wanted to play. They had some of their key attacking players on the bench. This is playing LAFC. This is what it looks like. You're going to have to really uh, approach it a little differently because not only uh, are they performing, but they're getting results week in, week out, which is, you know, sometimes you perform and you don't do that. So LAFC now is kind of scaring these opponents in a certain way. It's got to be a compliment that teams come in here and they don't run their starting their normal starting 11 because they, they think they got to be a little pragmatic. Steve even said at halftime of the broadcast, he's like, they're in a very low block. They're very compact. And Adrian Heath definitely went out there with a game plan to say, okay, fullbacks don't go too far forward. My D mids really stay in place. And he kept it in place until about that 65th minute when we, when we rolled the dice and brought in the subs. He thought, maybe that's my chance to shine, but maybe open the game up too much at that point. It's, I call it the witching hour. It was like the 65th, the mm -hmm. 80th minute where LAFC can go for the jugular. Once again, you see this phenomenon of wearing teams out and LAFC would love to score early and they I thought they had a good first 45 minutes they accrued a lot of chances they got to find a way to make those chances better yeah. than they are yeah make them bigger chances bigger chances where like guilt edge mm -hmm. this has got a very good chance of going in because they're they're peppering around they tried some long range efforts which were nice but then they did it they went to the well yeah. a lot and then they weren't so great but LAFC are building a building yes we want those early goals but there is as long as you don't concede, right? And they which, did it against Minnesota. They did it against Cincinnati. They still, found a way back. Yeah, not at all against Minnesota. But then again, still have not given up a goal in the second half. Nine games in. Unbelievable! Unbelievable! What this team is doing because the sample size is pretty big. Yeah, it's a. This is the time of year when you start to look quarter at quarter of teams. the season. Yeah, you start to look at teams and say, okay, this team's. I, I know now. I think they're good. This team, I'm worried about. This team, you know, it, nine games is is more than a quarter way through the season and. Yeah, like you said, we, they want to get bigger chances. And I think against Cincinnati, they had bigger chances. They didn't finish them. Minnesota played a much more resolute game, and I thought they stayed a lot more compact. And what LAFC didn't do was, I think they settled too much for that, that cross early. Yep. And the problem was, you just had Mahala and Chicho. And look, Mahala and Chicho can get at it. We know Chicho uh, is pretty good with his head, but when they're going two against four, two against three, and Minnesota's got some, some bigs there in their center back position, it's tough. So you, that's why Steve at halftime said, maybe one more pass. One more pass, open them up, and like you said, find a bigger opportunity, a higher percentage opportunity. Didn't come until they made the changes, and that's been a, a hallmark of LAFC season so far. We here, here's one of your. Can you guys? That's a that's a big helicopter this time. What's it doing here? I know. Yeah. They, hey. They, here are the airspace. This the is the Bredos airspace. How dare they? Did you just do a little Steve Miller there? <laughs> <laughs> By accident. Yeah. <laughs> Anytime I hear. I was talking about the big jet airliners. Jet are, airliner. I just think of Steve Miller. As, as you should. Yeah, I guess. I don't want to. Uh, a good I do want to say that on our 110 football shows, you confused a Billy Joel song with uh, Alicia Keys' Jay Z song. In that was weird. In rehearsal. What if I told you about rehearsal? <laughs> that was a bad one. Okay, the song title was New York State of Mind, and I confused it with Empire State of Mind. Yeah. I think that's a fair. Thank God our crack research staff was here to. Yeah. To to fix that. End of the day, the the point I wanted to make in that, on that show, and I did on Monday, LAFC, or that was the Expansion Mansion show. That's check out the one. Check out the 110 football yeah. YouTube. There's four great shows there, plus the pre and post shows around the LAFC games, the watch parties. It is uh, if you're an LAFC fan, or if you're tuning in as an MLS fan, or a fan of World Football, or Angel City. Yeah. We got you. We got to be inside the stadium this weekend, and it was a lot of fun to see a lot of people come by and wave, say hello. Hey, I'll tell you this: anytime you see us doing something, and you're wondering, can I get behind the camera? Can I wave into the camera? Yes, please do. 
You are more oh, than welcome time, to get on camera, wave, and then go find yourself on YouTube. So, yes, please check out 110 Football's YouTube for all that, for the live shows, for our stuff. But what I was going to say is I was trying to get to to talk about New York Groove because I, I just love that Ace Freely song. <laughs> I really do. I, something, like, I don't even necessarily love New York. I just love that song. I was watching it was Ace Freely maybe like seven or eight years ago. And then they asked him, would you ever get back together with Kiss? He goes, eh, they're going to have to pay me, pay me a hell of a lot of money. I go, great answer. <laughs> Fair. Fair enough. There it is. I don't think you're going to get that call. No. Not at this point because Kiss are, are winding down. Well, the problem According is. According to them. The problem is anyone can wear the makeup. Anyone can wear the, Brilliant. As far. Brilliant. How many people do you think have gone to Kiss concerts recently and gone, Ace Freely killed it? <laughs> I have no idea he's not there. <laughs> Right? Him and Pro wrestling is real. Him and Peter Chris. <laughs> Peter Chris. Peter Chris is hiding behind a drum set. I'm not hiding, but behind a drum set. Bro Beth. I'm also going to start singing it, but we can't do that. I already sang the Zola song. Yeah, we'll get a co content strike. You know, I want to talk about the, the people say, well, we're the deepest team for LFC, but this was, again, no to Jury Shradi, no Brian Rodriguez. So their, yeah. test is, their depth is being tested. It's being tested, but they've and got quality coming off the bench. I, I just want to talk about the a testament to cardio and fitness and working hard that this LAFC team is because we give credit to the guys coming off the bench but that starting 11 puts themselves in a position mm -hmm. to where they have done a big part of wearing the team down and we've talked to Danny Masofsky and he, uh, we've done that part of the podcast already and he talked about coming on here you're obviously seeing a team that is withered mm -hmm. that has been you know beaten down in over 70 minutes 65 minutes mm -hmm. and that's a, a job that is a it's really crystal clear when you see what how LAFC play in these games. Yeah. Every single one of them, it has followed that suit. So I, I, I think we have to give those starters a lot of credit because we, we repeat this the bench story repeatedly because it keeps coming up. But these starters put themselves in that position for a team that this week wasn't all-time depth. And the performance staff. Steve mentioned it in yes. his post-game press conference. He said, I got to give credit to my performance staff because what the coaching staff asks – of the starters, it's a high intensity game. It's not it's not running just for running sake, but they have to they have to make deep runs, hard runs where it's just it's not languid, it's not in a low block. Sometimes it's direct, and like you said, this is going to be a month where they've got seven matches, they've got a couple midweeks, and they've got obviously Open Cup. Uh, the depth ha depth has been tested, but the performance staff has kept this eleven fit, kept them firing at a high level, and then when a guy comes off the bench, he's ready to go. Like Danny, I, I we're, we'll talk about it. We talk about it with him when he comes on the show but that burst of speed that he had to get between those two defenders that was a moment where i was like try it try it at the box and if you lose it you can counter press to just get by those guys and then have that extra touch I, i'm sure he would have liked to have that finish but that was that was a moment and that's that's a testament i think to the performance staff he's a great finisher and he is a proper athlete and the the performance staff is something that most mls clubs if not any have at certainly not at this this mm -hmm. level it was a pro when LAC created this club, they said, this is what we want so we can get a premium uh, contribution from our players, and it's showing in a big way. May maybe more than ever here in 2022 because you have so many players, and it must be so intimidating to see that as an yeah. opponent now because we saw it in the last two years, and these clubs, because of what happened in 2018 and 2019, come in and beat LAC, it's an accomplishment. If any, Beating this team now is going to be viewed that times two yeah. because this team has this incredible aura about them. Yeah, you can't undersell it. A, you can't undersell the fact that I know a lot of people have been pointing to that second half record and a lot of people on social media I've been seeing like, man, we used to concede goals late. Now we score goals late. The way we change games, we've never, no LFC team has been able to change games in game the way that they've been able to do it this year. And it, again, it's a testament to those substitutes. And it goes back to the coaching staff having a plan and then executing it with the performance staff and saying, yes, we have guys that aren't going to start because there's only you can only play 11 players and we've got more than enough guys that could start. We can almost we talked about it. They can almost feel two teams at times, it feels like. But well, that's keep, why these trainings are so eye opening, because mm -hmm. it looks like a full on scrimmage. Well, and that's why it's so difficult to keep those guys that maybe don't start at peak condition because, you know, you let off a little bit. I'm not starting, but they keep it at a condition and it's paying off. The uh, and we, Steve Toronto talked about and keeping those guys happy. They're happy. There's a spirit about. There's this badge of honor about these guys. They got to be happy the when bench. they come into the games. They yeah. change games. They win. Yeah. They get three points. And the starters aren't happy because they're like, okay, we we know this. This is going to be the moment, and they've done it again. If it's happening all the time, it's a trend. So big win for Minnesota, which is a big win a, for LFC, a division me. rival, 
Uh, what was that? You said big win for Minnesota. A big big win against Minnesota. Did yeah. I say that? Yeah, Sorry, yeah. I'm all over. Uh, big win Again, it's against our first Minnesota. time back in a long time. We're getting back into that time. rhythm. Jordan Harvey. That helicopter threw me You're off. You're just thinking about Jordan Harvey. He's right. He's like over no, your shoulder. No, I'm thinking about that helicopter. It threw okay. me all off. Big win, which is a division rival. So LAFC, and you look at the standings, it's 22 points. Austin at 20. Galaxy at 16. Then they drop. <laughs> the drop-off's Harvey, getting bigger. Seattle, I think, was seven points. So, I mean, they're going to get better because they're in the, yeah. in the midst. They got a couple of games in hand, Champions too. But... League, and they have some games in hand. But that's a, that's a huge mountain ahead of them. Uh, even to the point where they're like, I don't think we're going to catch them at this early stage. They still could. Well, just but it's a very rem- good position to be in where you have you can. Remember when around January where you and I going out there trying to soothe everybody, just calm down, it's going to be okay. We didn't think it would be this good. We did not think it would be this good. So, look, even if there is, and there will be a moment in the season where there's a little rut. Every team goes through it. It's a long MLS season. It has different seasons within the season where you're playing hot games, you're playing games in the rain, you're going through a lot of stuff, a lot of travel. So there will be a chance where that happens. But the fact that they've set themselves up with this 7-1-1 record, 22 points through nine games, you can weather that storm and still have a very good chance at either topping the conference or getting that supporter shield, which will get you into that CONCACAF Champions League. Good home and away. Remember, their away trips have been long trips. Two mm-hmm. to Florida, once to Cincinnati. And they're taking three points away. Taking three points. Points on the road are good. Yeah, and a point on the road would be good, but they're winning those games. So let's move forward. LAFC with a couple games coming up here on uh, at home. It will be Saturday against Philadelphia Union. We'll preview that game here. Philadelphia first place in the East. Not at the point total that LAFC is. Mm-hmm. Following Tuesday, LAFC against Portland Timbers. In 32 teams remain in the uh, U.S. Open Cup. Check out LAFC.com for tickets. As we said in the third round, it was a great night out to see LAFC in a little different sort of environment in a competition that if they can you get gotta, going. you got to be kicking yourself if you did not go to that Orange County game. You buy that ticket, you can get there early, sit anywhere you want. Yep. You could have been, That's what you general admission been, means. You could have been right there. at midfield, seat, right in the, seat one or maybe right at the 18, right in front, front seat, and you could have seen five goals. So we will preview the U.S. Open Cup down the road, but it's Portland. It's a home game. Didn't wasn't necessarily going to be a home game, but mm-hmm. LAFC get two, and that's a good uh, that's a good way to get through a tournament. And then we'll see what happens next. But we'll talk about Philadelphia Union. If you haven't got tickets, you can check as well LAFC.com. You can see it on KCOP 13. It's one of our local broadcasts, which uh, makes me very very happy. Uh, you got a really good game. Yeah, for your comeback. And you here. said this on our 110 football shows. You know, when the games are selected, Galaxy's off the table, Portland's off the table. I get those other games, which I lo- enjoy calling. Once in a while, you get a very special game. I got to call the Carlos Vela uh, record-breaking goal-scoring game against Colorado, which yep. was the final game. You got There's the Houston, plenty of them. the Houston Rain game. The Houston Rain game. There's plenty of them, and I'm very happy about this. But this. This is set up before even – those games made themselves as right. into good games. This is one that the national broadcasters are going, oh, can we get that? I go, no, you can't. Yeah. Hands off. Uh, you can't, Ken. They yeah. can't get the it, phone's right? just ringing off the hook with ESPN and, and FS1 calling you, and you're saying, uh, no. let it go. We got this. We they got can't. this. They can't. They can down the road, but they can't here. Well, and I've, I think the fans would rather hear you calling the game with Jordan Harvey than, you know, those guys that just fly in. They just, they just show fly up. In. Sometimes they don't show up. <laughs> yeah, sometimes they don't show up. <laughs> so uh, it, it's, I'm very, very happy to be part of that. Uh, so if you can't make it to the stadium, mm-hmm. check us out on KCLP 13. This is going to be another distinct challenge about the way Philadelphia plays. They're going to clog up space. Yes. They're going to take away passing lanes. Uh, they have. There's a lot to like about Something Philadelphia. Something just happened in the Champions League game. Because, by the way, if, if you guys are watching us on video, you're seeing us out towards the field. We can see into where the guys are eating in the – what do you canteen? What do, what do we want to call it? Uh, the cafeteria. Cafeteria. Cafe. Uh, and, and Steve just got very animated. Something just happened. Oh. And I, I have a feeling. Well, I know. Was, I know. V- Villarreal scored two, so it was at this two. point when we're recording this, it was two two. So maybe you, look so you guys are gonna be laughing at us, going, yeah. "What are you talking about?" I like this Philadelphia team. I know they're limited I in what they could do. I, I like their scouting. I like how they can bring in guys. They had Casper Shabilko, who has moved on. Uh, Gaz Daniel Gazdag is uh, wasn't a top player in this league until a couple weeks ago Mm -hmm. they have a really good academy that created brendan aronson his younger brother paxton and jack mcglynn and um uh, one of the sullivan first name quinn sullivan uh, escapes me Mm -hmm. but these are guys that are playing on that anthony fontana who's not even there anymore he went to syria b so these this is a really good academy they're Mm -hmm. doing it right great stadium there in chester pennsylvania and after many years of not being successful they are now a perennial playoff team jim Curtin. Part of the Bob Bradley tree, uh, tree has gotten those results. 
it's going to look somewhat a little bit like Minnesota. Not, not apples no, to apples. No, 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 not quite. Not quite. I mean, there, but in the sense that you're not going to be too aggressive mm. in the way you attack because certainly playing away from home, you're not going to um, leave yourself open. You're gonna want to. You're gonna want to put yourself yeah. into the witching air, the, the witching hour. I think in the ways it'll look like Minnesota is. Yes, you're right. They'll they'll sit a little bit deep uh, because they'll want to stay compact and defend against LAFC. But really, they want LAFC to come forward because they want to create that space in behind. So where, where it'll be different. Whereas Minnesota said, "Hey, Robin Lud, uh, Emmanuel Reynoso, can the two of you go two v two, yeah. and can you maybe make something happen?" They're gonna play direct, and then they're gonna try to move their unit up as quickly as they can. So if they don't win that ball, and they've got uh, you speak about scouting. They got a, a, a forward in Uray and uh, Uray who scored in that opener. Who sco- who Who's now scored? the guy who scored the first goal in the world's largest soccer-specific that, stadium in the U.S. That goal, it, not world's U.S. That goal in Nashville is kind of prototypical of what you might see them try against LAFC. They won a. They turned them over in midfield. Immediately looked up, played long to Uray, and had plenty of space in front of them. Played into that space. Tried to go one v one. He uh, kind of undressed Walker there, uh, and then finished. And so that's where you're going to see that they're going to, when they play direct, then they're going to try to swarm you uh, because if they lose that first ball, they're going to want to get in around the second ball and just kind of create some havoc in midfield. They're just going to want to turn you over a lot. So you're going to have to be very clean. Whereas Minnesota could sit a little bit deeper and they were just kind of seeing if they could make something True. out of nothing. So, yeah, there, 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 there is differences. And obviously, Phil, you will see that. And I love, this is what Vince is great about. He'll give you something to, to look at with regards to how these games are played out because it's going to be a different challenge. Mm-hmm. Uh, as, as LAFC gets better, uh, teams are going to tighten the bolts a lot when they, when they play them, certainly at Bank at California Stadium. But it's a good team. They're in first place for a reason. Some are saying it could be a uh, MLS Cup preview. We can't really say that. But these are both teams that are comp- mm-hmm. contenders to be there when we wrap up this I season. like Philly. All the one. points, all, all, all you touched all the key points about Philly. Uh, they've, they've picked a style. They've really leaned into it. They believed in Jim Curtin and said, because he wasn't, they weren't good when he first got there. Remember that. And he said, well, I'm going to connect the academy. I'm going to get the scouting kind of locked in. And they've really leaned into their style. And now they're, from time to time, picking off a few internationals like Ure Gazdog uh, and bringing in some guys. I just mentioned, I remember Chris Albright and Pat Noonan were with that club, now yep. with Cincinnati. So this is a club that other clubs are looking at as, as an example, as a, a means to build them up, and yeah. Cincinnati have improved. Well, you got, yeah, you got Jim under Bob's coaching tree, and now he's got his own little coaching tree that he's starting up. And it can be, it can be effective in this league if you really lean into it. It's when, it's when you get teams that are like, we want to press, but we're not sure about it. Mm-mm. You, you know, I was talking with Jordan Harvey about this. I said, what's worse than no press is a bad press. Um, and Philly is one of the best at it. I, I think, you know, it's funny. They Everyone talks about Red Bull because obviously it's just so built in their nature. But Philly really is built somewhat in that Red Bull way. And they really want to get guys that are, are physically good that they can bring up in the system. And then maybe they sell them for money. But Philly's kind of in that, in that vein, too. We like pressing. We like to see these teams like LAFC and... We, we hope there's the day where we have more teams that look like LAFC just because it's nicer on the eyes when you're turning on an MLS game. But all different encourage. styles is welcome. All different just, styles are welcome. And, you know what's and, welcome? And, and by necessity yeah. right now in this league. You know what we should say more than I'm just that, saying a, like a group six no, I think or seven teams. What you're saying is this. Just have a style. Just have a style. We, we are still don't at the point in MLS where not every team diamond. has a style. Don't yes. nickel, don't or don't live in those gray areas. Well, don't don't cheapen your fan and don't cheapen your your fan base and your players. Like lean into something. Go all in. Yes, maybe you flame out catastrophically, but at least when I show up and go to watch your team play, I know what I'm looking for. I did say it have a style, but I do like this style we see here. Yeah, you can like still have your favorite. It. You know, like if you watch the Premier League, you get City, you get Liverpool. A lot of people are well, it's just a lot of people are ha- hammering like the Via Reals and and, yeah. and you know Diego Simeone, your your favorite El Cholo for the way they play. His documentary's I'm okay with it. out. His documentary's out. I haven't watched it yet, but uh, I need to see that. But yeah, it works. It works if I'm, done. Yeah. In a very con- in a convicted way, where you say this is our style. Mm-hmm. So there you go. So uh, this is going to be a big game, and then we have the Austin game on the 18th. Look, there is so much. This going month is on. very important for LAFC. And there are so many ways to set up next year. With everyone wants Concacaf Champions League, the U.S. Open Cup is a pathway to that. So is MLS for that matter. The way LAFC is going, mm-hmm. which is a you know you obviously got to start thinking about supporter shield as you get into the summer if you're in that position. Long way to go, but this month. I'm really curious to see what it looks like when we get through these next, what, four games. Rapids game in there, too, that we didn't talk about. We will learn about, I mean, not just because it's a congested schedule, but the quality of opponents, um, the knockout games. We will learn a lot about LAFC in in this month. Uh, And then 
after this month, we get a little nice little two week break there. Sure. In Any plans? Actually, you and I, we were talking with Jordan Harvey. We're gonna try to get on those uh, jet skis to Catalina. I forgot about that, but yeah. I'm down for that. I'm planning a European trip with my fan, but we haven't picked a destination. I'm just checking prices all the time. But, but we'll in June, go. you're going to go. In June, because that's the time. Okay, I'm but we'll go to Catalina first. And do the, do the jet no ski. No one's ever do died doing that, correct? Not as far as I know. Not just yet. on a jet ski going, because I've gone on boats across there, hey. and it gets, a little, it gets a little hairy. Hey, Mr. LAFC, he can do it all. He'll, he'll jump in the water. He'll see he can. Again. Okay, there you go. I feel much safer. Yeah, not me. <laughs> I'm going to look at you. Go, not because I don't uh, want to. It's just I'm out. I know. We are getting going. This is Inside LAC, the Max and Vince podcast. Coming up next, we will talk to Danny Masovsky, a guy who has endeared himself to the fan base, a guy who is getting results and is a big part of this LAFC winning machine. Inside LAFC, Max and Vince podcast. Check it out. Subscribe, rate, review, tell a friend. Back here at the LAFC Performance Center, as we are now joined by Danny Masovsky here on Inside LAFC, the Max and Vince podcast. you got to be feeling the love, not only... People get excited at the stadium when they see you coming in. The broadcast highlighted you, because I watched it when I came home. The FS1 highlighted you on the sideline getting ready to come in. Uh, as if this, this impending doom for Minnesota. But you've got to be feeling uh, much satisfaction because of that. Yeah, I just think it's good to be, you know, in good form and being able to score goals and get assists and help the team. And, you know, we had a few guys out injured. So, you know, I know, I, you know, it's my job to, you know, step in and make an impact. And. And yeah, I mean, I, was, I didn't see the broadcast, but I know. Well, I, I figured, I figured <laughs> you did it, a and I was at the <laughs> yeah. game. But when I when I tuned in, I saw it. Go, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's uh, cool. You know, there are people in the LAFC supporters group are trying to get iPhones to develop a moose emoji. Are you warming up to the nickname? I mean, it's a play on words on your last name, obviously. But yeah, no, I'm I'm been warmed up to it by now. <laughs> so I mean, I like it. Yeah, let's get a moose emoji. Let's get Apple. a moose emoji. As if he had a choice. He's yeah. like, no, no, don't call me moose. Sorry. But that's how exactly. nicknames start. So it was very good. I remember we first spoke to you about it. It's pretty cool to see it evolve. Yeah. Yeah. I see you on the socials from time to time. Do you, how much do you peruse LFC socials? Because to Max's point, uh, when you scored against FC Cincinnati, later that day they put out a great little video where it, they're highlighting that LFC has had a ton of goal contributions, top in the league from substitutes, and then they did the SpongeBob five minutes later, and then of course you scored. Did you see that one? That was. I, I thought that I'm was pretty that one. Yeah, I just think, yeah, that's, I mean, that's good on the whole team. I mean, I was the one to be able to put it, push it over the top, so I think we went first in the league in that category. And, but, I mean, everybody else on the subs was scoring before that, yeah. so it's been good. Can I ask you about that strike? Because uh, I, I've always, when people ask me, you know, what, what makes Danny different from some of the other forwards? And I say, you know, he's, he's a real pure finisher. Some of the guys, they do other things a little bit differently, but Danny's a real finisher. And that ball, do you practice a lot in, in kind of striking balls that aren't, necessarily set up for you because it was it was bobbling a little bit and you've just arrowed it right into the top corner <laughs> yeah i think yeah carlos played it and yeah i knew like to generate enough power on it you know you had to just take a touch and it bounced up a little so it actually played in my favor so in my head i was just thinking let me get a clean connection on it and i did and then i think uh i forgot who the defender was but he stuck his legs out in between <laughs> and ended up going through his legs yeah so. But, I mean, in my head, I was just trying to focus on getting clean connection and it went right. to the top corner. But as a, as a finisher, do you do good out and do drills where you say, like, there's going to be times where it's not going to be clean. I'm not going to just have a carpet to roll it on. So, like, bounce the ball out there. Do little things, like, off the wall, stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, I think I practice a lot just hitting the ball off the wall. But I would say that one, I don't really practice that one as much where a ball's bouncing and hit it. It's more you're practicing more just, you know, in the corner shots or those types of things that you're expecting in a game. But that one was more just kind of just went within just reaction yeah exactly reactionary that's a great qu i would love to get in depth i know we don't have the time about what it takes no, he's to gonna be here for like two okay hours. good yeah. uh but being a pure finisher it's a it's a it's a really interesting title to have and everyone obviously has to do reps and reps to be good at that is there you touched about like hitting the wall or hitting corners is there something that you would pass on to someone and say this is what i did to have because it seems like things slow down for you when you're in front of goal for you to do to have in your toolkit when you want to be a pure finisher? I would say a lot of it's practice. And growing up, you know, my whole life, I just, you know, practice finishing. I've always played forward. Um, you know, if I had advice, I don't know. I would say get it inside the box. I think that's the biggest thing that even our coaches try to point home to all of our forwards. And, I mean, for me, that that's always just been instinct for me to always just make around the box. You were born with it. Yeah, I do think <laughs> part of, definitely part of it is I was born with it. And, and then, yeah, I mean, I think it's a combination of that and a lot of training and, yeah, so, I mean, that would be my advice is just, yeah, practice finishing and then get inside the box, get in dangerous spots because, you know, the ball will come to you. How much are you being optimistic? Because you, you get a lot of finishers that say it's not just about getting in the box, but sometimes it's like just take that chance. And, yeah, 
everyone points out right place at the right time. You're like, yeah, I did it nine other times. I think Gary Lineker used to say that. Yeah, yeah they don't see the 20 <laughs> other runs I do, but if I get it two times a game, right. that's two goals. Yeah, I think that's definitely one of the hardest things as a forward is just trying to always stay optimistic and expect the ball is going to come even when it's you know a very low chance that it might come or even make the through, through run even when you know like maybe there's no chance the midfielder is going to see and hit it. But yeah, exactly. I think as a forward, you need to be, yeah, you need to be very optimistic. Always easier when you're on form too, right? Like after a few goals start going in, you're like, I'll go for everything. Exactly. I think, yeah, once you're scoring goals, then, you know, you're kind of anticipating the next one. You have played well enough to start. Uh, there's no, I'm sure you want us to get some games where you start, but there's obviously something special about coming off the bench and for lack of a better expression, coming to the rescue here for the goals. Changing the game. Changing the game. And being in there at the end of the game to enjoy that moment. Uh, we saw it with Ryan Hollingshead. We've seen it with you in the past. We saw it with Sifu as well this weekend. Uh, Coach Terangelo has said so many times ago, look, I've taught, I, I do the starting 11, and people go, okay, you all want to be in there, and I can't keep it, keep everyone happy. But how is your, out, your mindset and those of your teammates coming off the bench? Because it's something that has defined this season, and it continues to be something that separates LAFC from so many other clubs. Right. I just think, yeah, I think we just have one of the strongest rosters, you know, in MLS. And I think a lot of the guys on the bench could be starters on, you know, a lot of MLS teams. Um, but I mean, I think, you know, subbing in versus game versus starting, I think it has its pros and cons to it. I think the pro would be you're coming into the game when, you know, they're all tired and they're and you're just coming in fresh legs and able to just, you know, have bursts, you know, try to get through on goal. But I would say, you know, maybe one of the cons is you don't get into it as good of a rhythm. You know, it takes you a little bit, maybe five, ten minutes to, you know, start actually getting to, you know, with the flow of the game. So, but I think all of our subs are just, everyone's done a really good job is trying to, you know, minimize that con and, and get in the flow of the game early. And then after that, you have fresh legs and, and you're going to get good opportunities. I want to ask a little bit about your relationship with Chicho. Forwards don't normally get along, right? And it's not, it's not nothing against forwards. It's just you guys all want to score. Even if that guy's scoring goals, you want to score those goals that he's scoring. But you and Chicho just seem to have this, this connection because that goal that you scored against, that he scored against Orange County was almost identical to a San Jose goal. Like you just it literally could lay it on top of it. Um, that, and then the way he celebrates with you, he clearly loves that you guys got that. What's, what's that relationship like? Yeah, I think me and teachers have a really good relationship uh, ever since he got here, since day one. I think it's just that forward connection, you know. We don't really speak so much the same language, mm -hmm. but it's more soccer is just our universal language, and we're both forwards. And, and yeah, I, don't, I wouldn't agree that all forwards don't like each other. I would say, actually, <laughs> <laughs> I would say I get, I mean, at least me, I've always get along with forwards because there's just a relate. You just, you could relate to them in terms of, like, what you go through in training, what you go through in games. So I think ever since Chicho came here, we're both number nines, we're both goal scorers. So I think... I think that honestly helps with chemistry on the field because we kind of know a little bit and can, can anticipate runs that we're going to make just because we kind of have a similar mindset of scoring goals. So, But, I mean, yeah, ever since I got here with Chicho, it's been really good. He's assisted me on a lot of goals, and I've assisted him on a lot of goals. And, and yeah, it's just been really good when we're on the field together. I'm just saying it's just nice to see you play off of each other because you see yeah. forwards are you're like, yeah. that was the run I was going to make, man. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, yeah, we, that's we're, my we're space. Pretty, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think, yeah, we have a good understanding of, you know, who's going and when's going. So I mean, those good. back heels are, they're almost innate. Like, you yeah. Just, you, yeah. it just happens. And, it, and it's funny because when we watch it, obviously it's different for the opponent. They can't really see it coming, but we're like, oh, my, uh, and then you guys just, it, literally, the timing's yeah. perfect, the weight of the ball's perfect. It was actually funny, because right after I backheeled that to Chicho when we were celebrating, he actually told me right then, he was just like, hey, like San Jose, like San Jose. Wow. So, so he, call, he called it first, and then it, I didn't. Nice. At first, what like, an eye on that yeah, when I did the backheel, I was like, that reminded me of something, but I, that quick, like, right after it happened, that didn't hit me, and then he reminded me, I was like, oh, you're right, that was just like the San Jose backheel that he gave me, so. <laughs> Chicho go. called it first. <laughs> it's those number 10s that you got to be leery of if you're a number 9. Yeah. If you know, you got to, yeah. hey, right? Yeah, because they're like, I want goals too. You're like, no, you're supposed to pass me the ball. <laughs> exactly. You're talking about assists, and I, maybe we paint you as his number 9. He's between the posts, and you said get in that area. But Well, we saw him with a, the burst of speed. The burst of speed coming Minnesota. way back to kind of set, set, set these guys off on the wings. And just the... The all-around game that you want to work on to be a complete player. What are the what what has that been like to to yeah. increase those other parts up? I just think you know as I continue to you know grow and play as a professional, I think exactly you want to become a more all-around player. You don't want to just be a goal scorer. You also want to be a provider at times. And I think throughout the years, you know, I've been able to get better at that. Just seeing passes earlier, but uh, yeah, I just think 
I think what's contributed to that is I've been kind of practicing on the wing a lot more this year, where before in my career I really just played, you know, center forward as the number nine. But because we have so many great players, I've been having to train on the wing gotcha. so much, which I don't mind. I think it's good. I think the more I train there and practice there, the more the better I get at it. So, I mean, I think it's good. It's, in the long run, it'll only help my career. So, so yeah, I think that's part of what it. Is, what is the kind of – where does it – change for you when you're on the wing or you you feel like you're expected to go 1v1 more what it, what it kind of is different from from what you're doing I just yeah I think in the style that we play if you're a winger you touch the ball more you know just because the number nine is typically not getting the ball as much because we don't play as direct you know right to the center forward we like to build it to the outside backs and then kind of combine from there so I think I mean that would be the difference I think you just get more touches on the ball and but, I mean you could still find yourself in really dangerous spots as well so I mean I don't feel like if I'm on the wing I won't be able to score as many goals. I just think I'm caught in a little di bit of a different position, but I think I could still because really it, out of that. it's what wi wide forward is what you guys <laughs> usually call it. Or exactly, just our wingers too, especially. Are, it's not um, it's not like you know you're dropping back as much, almost like a like a like a left midfielder. You know? yeah. you're up there. So I think yeah, I like the way we we play in terms of a left wing. Really yeah, you're not high. working on crossing the ball. You're not whipping it. Yeah, in. I mean, <laughs> maybe I should be practicing a little more on hey. that. But <laughs> but I mean, yeah, in our style, it's more you know you're supposed to get after it yeah. and get inside the box and score goals. Yeah. It, Oh, I was going to ask about your aspirations. We, I've been saying, you know, you know, look, Danny Masovsky has the skill set of a guy that you could see at, at, at a very high level. You have come to a club where there may have been issues to get minutes and numbers, but you've you've you hit your spots there where you're getting minutes and numbers. You're playing for a club, as you just pointed out, that play a dynamic style that can only help you in the big picture. We know about the the North Macedonia uh, approaches and stuff, but what are your aspirations to to keep going and building, and what do you see for Danny Masovsky? Yeah, I mean, a lot of it's I just look at what I can control on the field each and every day in training. So, I mean, I just try to, to try to get better and, you know, it, it is tough, you know. We have a really good team, so, of course, I'm always trying to break in. you've broken through there. I mean, there must have been moments where you're like, this is, yeah. how do I crack through this I, squad? I think, yeah, my whole, you know, since I've been here three years and I think throughout all these three seasons, there's been times, you know, where I've been called to get onto the field and play my role. So, I mean, I think I just try to come out there and just do my best, try to take you know, every opportunity that I get on this team because I know it's hard to get on the field. You need to earn it and, and train really well or else you're just not going to get on the field. So, um, yeah, I mean, I just think, I, obviously, yeah, I aspire to be, you know, a starter on, you know, an MLS team. That's the goal, and that's what I'm trying to do. And, and yeah. I mean, See where it goes from there? Exactly. Yeah. Max is out here stumping for you. Like, every, I was, he's like, I'm stumping well, for you all the time. And I, yeah, I don't want to say too much, but I just like, man, yeah, Danny, you're, look, I look you're, at you play and I go, the, that's kind of, yeah. check it, check. You're a follower of the international game. You obviously know what's going on. It's a World Cup year. Everyone's looking for, you know, it, the World Cup is weird because obviously you want to have a squad going into the World Cup, but there's always for number nines. That guy that, like, if he's on form and he's scoring goals, you're going to get phone calls that says, maybe yeah. we need to have that guy on the plane. So, Max, That's what I say. Thanks Max for saying. Thanks for stumping for you. So. I, yeah. This is your guy. Yeah, appreciate you. Yeah, you got it, man. <laughs> and, and, and part of it, some of the other guys aren't really hitting their spots, but this guy is, and they love him in Los Angeles now. <laughs> it is the excitement of the supporters when when you come in and and everything. It's actually can people... we touch on that for a hot second? Yes, let's do it. The moose this time that you came in was louder than I've ever heard. You're right. I actually heard that right <laughs> when I saw I heard moose. Yeah. And I, yeah man. Were you taking it back yeah, a little been, bit? Been, you've got it. A... Yeah, it actually was a little bit. You know, I've been getting a lot of local fans. I was. I remember I was. I was getting Uber Eats the other day. This was right after the Cincy game. I'm, I just go outside my apartment. Some guy rolls his window down. He's like, Moose, no <laughs> Thanks way. For the win. Thanks. And I was like, wow. I was like, man, the fans are showing out right now. Yeah. Here. But they don't give that. They don't give that away. You earn that, yeah, and that's what they sure. said. They 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 have faith. They confide in you, and uh, yeah. it's beautiful to see that relationship. Yeah, I'm just, uh, loving the support. I think the fans this year have just been incredible. And so I mean. I mean, I, my hat off I would say other than the call and response when Carlos's name gets called in the starting lineup, I think you were a close second <laughs> and the Moose yelling out. And that's during the game. Yeah. And you know that they the, – the thing is they're going, you know, 100 miles an hour through the entire game. So for them to actually kind of stop down for a hot second and actually take the time to call out your name, it's yeah. – like Max says, oh, a big deal. It was really cool. I actually noticed that this game. I was like, wow, that's like really cool. Well, you enjoy it all. Enjoy it. I know you put the hard work in, and we always talk about what a delight it is to be here and see the spirit of this club and – 17, 18, 20 guys working hard in the Las Vegas light guys with someone. Oh, by the way, do you, some of these guys are doing going through that process. You've you've now become a full LAFC guy. Um, any have you exchanged it? Because we see some of the guys training here, obviously, that are going to go to the Las Vegas lights about that process, because it's a tough one and how they can kind of grow into uh, players and show an example like yourself. Right. I just think, yeah, it's a good opportunity, you know, for a player, depending on where they are in their career, you know, what they need to. I definitely went through that process even before I even came to LAFC when I was in Reno. So, I mean, 
I played you know a number of games in the USL, and I think you know it helped my career just get experience and because it's a different type of experience than training. You know, you need actual game in minutes. So yeah, I think it's good for you know if a guy's gonna go there and play. You know, it's definitely just a good opportunity to get fitness and just get get used to the you know match speed. It's hard, but it's a good system. It does because it gets you out of your comfort zone. Definitely, I think that's yeah. the most important thing. It puts you out of your comfort zone. It pushes you into a place where you know you need to you know figure it out on the fly. So I think yeah, definitely it's good. Danny, we're thrilled for you, and we always appreciate your time here. And hopefully, we'll come back here with uh, with uh, some more some more good news coming your way. LAFC fan favorite Danny Masovsky. That'll put a bow on our show. Make sure you check out Inside LFC, the Max and Vince podcast. Go to the library of podcasts if you want to listen to some old ones. They're all very good. Like, subscribe, share, tell a friend, and uh, we'll be getting ready for Philadelphia Saturday night, KCOP 13, 8 p.m. local time. Oh, yes! They knocked on the door, and they finally kicked it through.